What's up? This is Dustin from BG's Tabletop. We have another video cast episode for you today. We are talking about this. We're talking about what I'm doing right now, which is creating content for the tabletop gaming industry, specifically more like board games. We have Tom on the show to share in this discussion. We talk about how he got started. We share some tips for getting started and some other tips and tricks and what our processes look like for creating content. Super excited for that conversation. Before we jump into the episode, I do want to mention it was really cool to have Box Meeple and Billy Indiana at the store yesterday. Uh, I want to share a couple pictures. So in these pictures you can see they came in, we played Planet Unknown, uh, they also played Trekking Through History, and we just got that in stock in our store too. Um, but it's really awesome, Box Meeple visiting from England, coming to the States. I'm really glad they were able to visit our store, had a good time in the US I hope. And Billy Indiana lives nearby, so hopefully we'll see him again in the store. Uh, but again, thank you for stopping by, and then let's get into the video cast episode. All right, so welcome to another video cast episode of BGE's Tabletop Talk Why We Game. So, as you can see, we got a new setup. We're kind of working on getting a new setup going for these conversations. And today we have a really great conversation. We're going to talk about creating content and specifically creating content in the tabletop gaming space and today we have tom he is from a board gamer um so i'm going to welcome tom onto the show tom welcome to bge hey Talk. hey dustin how you doing good good i'm um, excited to get into this topic we were chatting a little bit before about like equipment and stuff and there's there's so many things we can talk about about creating content um but oh, before yeah. we get into the episode would you mind introducing yourself a little bit yeah, I'm uh, Tom. I work on a YouTube channel called The Board Gamer, where we try to make uh, quality content using like cinematic type intros to kind of pull in newcomers to the hobby. And we also do how-to videos and reviews for people that are already in the hobby. Awesome. And then I, I feel like I need to start asking this question to a lot of guests, even myself, because I use the word we. Um, when I talk about like my store, is we a like you as in your channel or is it someone helping you as well? Uh, it's mostly me as my channel, but I, my girlfriend does hesitantly, of course, help me <laughs> on occasion. Okay, cool. Yeah, my wife, she she does a lot more now that we, we run a <laughs> store. <laughs> she, I mean, she helps in the store like twice a week on Thursdays for D&D. &D. She runs the register and mm -hmm. then during Pokemon on Sunday. So but in the past, I would always say we, and it was kind of just me. <laughs> yeah, that's the royal we. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Cool. So we are talking about creating content, and um, I guess I'm trying to think of where we want to start. I mean, maybe we can share a little bit about our background and where we both got started, and then that way it'll provide some context as to our journey into creating content. Yeah, um, works. If you want to start, and then I'll kind of add into well, how we got started. A lot of people probably listen to the show, maybe know a little bit about our background. So let's start with like where you got started and how you got going with a board gamer. Well, this happened back in about uh, 2015. That's when I actually got into modern board games. Uh, previously, I played board games like the ones you'd find, you know, for anywhere from chess to Monopoly to all this. And then I had a day off and I was just so happy to be on YouTube and I came across a tabletop on Geek and Sundry with Will Wheaton and all that. Mm. And I did that for most of the day, so much so that when my girlfriend got home from work, she's like, hey, what'd you do today? And I said, I watched people play get board games online. <laughs> and she just looked at me and I was like, no, 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 you don't understand. There, there's, there's all sorts of stuff. So we watched a couple and we were like, oh, okay, cool. So we went and we got a couple of these games and just played them. And I started my collection ever since then. And then from there, the pandemic happened mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of, you know, made things a little less, uh, I couldn't really get people together to play games as much. And prior to this, I had planned on possibly opening a board game cafe. And I have to say, thankfully, I'm glad I didn't because not everybody's doing great right now. Mm. And uh, sitting there for a while, just kind of waiting for things to blow over. I was, you know, wanting to do stuff with these games, you know, couldn't have people to play come over and play so I just started uh, recording these videos and I put a few out and that's pretty much how it started. That's awesome. So do you have any experience creating content before doing it for board games? 
Uh, honestly, not at all. I'm, okay. I was technically challenged before starting this at all. My girlfriend used to take uh, photography pictures. So she had a couple of cameras laying around. She had some lightings. And I was just like, you know what, let's give it a shot. Let's see what, what's the worst that could happen. If it doesn't work out or if I don't like it, you know, it, it's just a couple of videos out there in the world. And that was it. But yeah, I didn't know. I mean, I know how to work a computer, but I mean, it's just a, it's been a learning curve. Man, those, those thunderstorms. That's <laughs> we, we can talk about that with creating content. How do you create content with, <laughs> with the uh, distractions? No, oh, um, I love yeah. thunderstorm stuff. So. <laughs> That's but uh, more time is better than you can just kind of work around it. <laughs> mm, yeah, so true. But it, yeah, it's tough. Like, like, I mean, our interview, this has happened with guests in the past for me, especially when I lived in Taiwan. Um, it was a little bit more challenging because there were very loud scooters who would drive past our apartment. And then like there was construction a lot of times, too. Mm -hmm. um, and we would just have guests scheduled and there was construction going on. And we had to had to manage. Um, but I'm, I would say I'm actually really impressed if you have no experience creating content before to creating your content now, because I think your, your stuff's really good. Um, well, I think a lot, of it, a lot of it comes from just the people in the community that I've been able to connect with and talk to, and they share their knowledge. And I think that is like just way, way better than trying to go it alone. Yeah, and that's that's one thing that's really really important is um having the board game community there's a web or a website a facebook group board games reviewers and media on mm -hmm. facebook um if anyone's interested in getting started i highly recommend going there um i'm someone who is a big observer in those groups and you can learn a lot by just kind of watching what other people post um even when you don't necessarily have questions but i wanted to show this um it's your your YouTube channel. If anyone's listening on the podcast, not the video cast, we'll just have to go to a board gamer to check it out. But I'm going to play it and kind of describe it. I think I don't think there's any narration. I think it's mainly just music and stuff. Yeah, I try to do just uh, something that way you don't have to worry about any uh, language barriers or anything like that. Just visuals and music. I'll turn it down here. Yeah, there's, I see you included some stop motion. That's something I have no idea how to do. <laughs> That's awesome. This is a wild, I don't know how to pronounce it, wild Serengeti? Serengeti, Serengeti. yeah. Um, there's a not... very uh, new game that recently came out. Uh, Bad Comet was the publisher. <laughs> is that you there? Running yeah, the <laughs> that was a little... Uh, that was a, an interesting one because I originally had a whole nother introduction planned out for that. And I put it together, I watched it, and I did not like it. <laughs> mm, so I basically scrapped most of it and uh, went back and did it again. And I'm much happier with what it looks like now. Mm. That's awesome. And actually, maybe something we can dig into. Uh oh, um, FedEx is here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll see if they, uh, we'll see if they keep, keep, come in or if they try to come in maybe it's not for me but it's usually for me um <laughs> so you how often do you do that is my question because for me i'm in the school of thought that content better out there than not like because you never know what will resonate with um i don't know whether it's your audience or a new audience but i also see the other side like you have to be happy with what what your final product is, right? Um, so do you do that pretty often or is that something that maybe you just recently? Honestly, that was the first time. Usually okay. I go in there, I have a pretty good picture in my head of how it's gonna look, how it's gonna do it. I shoot it and then I put it together and it usually comes out uh, at least at bare minimum subpar to what I, what I wanted to do. Uh, but that one, I just, it just, it wasn't, I wasn't feeling it as the middle, mm. I was editing it and it just wasn't coming out the way I had originally pictured it. My girlfriend said, you know, maybe just step away, come back to it tomorrow. So I did. And I sat down and I thought about it. I was like, you know what? I want to do this instead. And I, I kept half of it. Uh, for instance, there was a, what really was bogging me down is there was a transition scene that I was trying to do where you had the, you had the one little creature on one side of the thing and you had the, the leopard on the other and a little bar was going to come by and it was going to basically switch to where the leopard had i guess basically eaten the little gazelle mm, okay and it just it wasn't it wasn't going with the music it wasn't 
like it, it just the timing, the direction, the fuzziness. It just it, I didn't I didn't like it. So I just went ahead. I was like, you know what? Let's pull that out. That's taken up about a third of this whole thing, and it doesn't even come. Out, it's not even looking how I want it to. So let's try yeah. and add a bit more comedy. Make it a little because this one is actually totally different from all my other ones. Usually, it's all just the board game components. Okay. This one I added a little bit of myself just because I was having more fun with it. And I wanted people yeah. to see that I was That's having cool. fun. That's really cool. That's uh, there's again, there's so many angles and topics we can talk about creating content. That's one thing that I really love is playing around with fun things. I love doing that with if you listen to our first like few episodes of our podcast, like I would create like fun um, sounds or voices and stuff like that. But now, because I, I have a lot of other things on my plate, I try to be as efficient as possible. So I kind of run out of the creativity side of like implementing stuff like that. Because um, I feel like with most art, and I think a lot of board game designers would probably agree, is it's never 100% finished, right? There's always something you can oh, yeah. change or add. How do yeah. you decide when like something's done for you? That's a tough one. Uh, usually once I publish it, I publish it, it's done, it's out, it's, I can't touch it anymore. But if we're talking about before that, which I'm sure you are, uh, it's, it's tough because you want to, with us, we try to do, or I say us again, with me, I try to do uh, the how-to videos and the reviews. And for board game hobbyists already, a lot of them just want you to get to the point. They want to know whether or not they should buy this game and they want to know how to play the game, which i um, I'm guilty of that as well. You know, sometimes when I'm looking up something, I just want to know how it works and what it does. But I think part of the thing is we need to expand on that to get new people into the hobby so we can have, so we have to have fun with it and show, that's why I do those introductions. So I give myself a couple weeks. If it takes me like two, three days to do what I need to do, that's great. And I'm happy with it. And I move on. Mm. But if it takes me the whole two weeks and sometimes push it into the third when I shouldn't be, then, you know, that's just what, what I have to do sometimes. It's it's kind of hard to really determine. It's really just on, on mood, on timing, on just how clear the vision is that I started with and how true it comes to be. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's for me now. I mean, in the past, when I only when I was only doing the podcast, that's all I was doing related to board games. Um, I was more comfortable with like spending more time on it now, like for example, with this video cast, my vision, we haven't released an episode yet. So if you're watching this, you're, you've probably seen a couple episodes already and everybody knows my vision now, but my vision is to maybe create some segments before bringing a guest on, but for the guest segment and, or those segments before really limit my editing and I guess you call it post production or no mm -hmm. production of the content. So where I don't spend a lot of time with that. Um, and one thing we can talk about too, and that's why I really like TikTok is it's very raw. It's very, that's what you get rewarded on the platform for doing is creating like uh, very transparent, very raw content. One thing that really grinds my gears for a while <laughs> on TikTok, I don't know if you, you, explore TikTok a little bit. I guess you you said you mentioned Wusong board games. So yeah, I, I, I publish basically those little shorts. I post them on Instagram and TikTok. It's pretty mm. much the same thing. I use Instagram more because I can also post my photography on there. Okay. But I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's pretty much the same content. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's one thing that we do too is like we try to recycle as much content as we can. Hopefully yeah. when we release this video co video cast, I'll be taking some clips from it to share on TikTok and Instagram too. But one thing that really bugged me about TikTok early on, it was when you would go watch people and they would be doing like a quote unquote podcast, but they would be taking their lapel mics and talking into it. And like you could hear their, what do you, the plosions, I think they're called, that when you like say a P into the microphone and just mm -hmm. like kind of break your speakers. And these views were getting like, these channels were getting hundreds of thousands of views. I'm like, oh my gosh, that bugs me so much because I've put in so much effort into my podcast and we like the equipment and all that. But I finally realized like, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> like yeah, S's sometimes this, this yeah. lavalier picks up S's so much. Like, I'll be sitting there 
I'll be saying it and I'll, it'll just have that little spike when I'm going to edit. And it's like, ooh, I probably should say that again. Yeah, but I, I don't think it, I don't know. I feel like it doesn't matter so much as it used to because you'll see, and I think TikTok and other social media where it is more raw, more transparent is, uh, I guess, the reason for it because people are more used to seeing not as high quality produced content mm -hmm. i mean there's a lot of like people who just blow up on tiktok now that we're just using their you know their phone and not even a microphone from their phone they're just recording from their phone but eventually they get better and they add on stuff um yeah i think that's that's good for content creators that want to put out a lot of at a single time you know like you see some of their backgrounds or some of what they're wearing sometimes they put out four or five videos back to back in the mm. same day or sometimes you know over the course of a week but that's only like maybe an hour or two of recording so it they probably are putting in the time it just doesn't look like it because there's such short burst of it but i mean the same thing could be said the other way they could just be hey i need to put out a lot so let's just do what we can in this time period yeah yeah i think tiktok's great at that i'm I always try to do it and it's <laughs> for me it's monday tuesday i like i'm all about it i get like two or three videos four videos maybe out on monday and tuesday and or saved for a draft to go out later mm -hmm. but then as the week goes on we get busier and i'm like oh man i just <laughs> ran out of steam um yeah I, I i can't keep up with the TikTok. it's just it's too it's too fast paced for me i want it i want it to be like nice and clean so that way anyone can be like, oh, wow. You know, even if they don't like what the content is about, they at least appreciate the quality of it. You know, that's that's part of the reason why I avoid TikTok. I shouldn't say avoid it. Why I'm not as strongly invested in TikTok as I am for mm -hmm. like Instagram or YouTube. Yeah. And that's I mean, that's another challenge is like deciding how and what social media channels to use. Mm -hmm. And I think it just really depends on the person. Um as a business owner, I try to leverage each one in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, like Instagram, I'll post in our story kind of as like when we get new product in, I'll post something or like we have an event coming up, we'll post in the stories. Um, TikTok will be like behind the scenes stuff. I might make a video about stuff other like a big shipment of product we got in. Um, the video cast more long form conversation stuff. Um, for you, you use mostly YouTube to create. Is it? mostly uh board game reviews or what what kind of content do you make with your youtube and then like how do you use on instagram on youtube i do a uh, board game uh, how to plays and reviews oh, and i try to yeah the how to plays they they take a lot of time it's a lot of scripting because mm -hmm. you have to make sure you get all the rules right and everything so it's a lot of reading and a lot of writing and a lot of playing you know because even though the yeah. rule mates say one thing, if it doesn't play out right, you kind of got to double check it and be like, okay, am I doing that right? Or if it's, you know, and, uh, and sometimes, you know, you get it wrong. You, you, you play it, you play it, you play it. And you find out five years later, oh, I've been playing that one thing wrong. <laughs> yeah. 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 That happens. Uh, but yeah, we do that. And then we do the reviews. The reviews really consist of mainly of that, like those little short 30 second, uh, about 30 second intros to kind of pull in the viewer and then just go straight into just camera talking to you, telling you about the components that they come with, the uh, replayability, my experience with the game, and whether I think it's boring. That's kind of where the whole mm. board gamer come, comes in, you know? It's like, are you okay. bored? <laughs> That's cool. Um, so I, I want to talk about maybe two more things. Um, one, we were just talking about reviews. So um, I think that's been a big topic on different Facebook sites and YouTube, maybe in the last like couple months about being biased when releasing content or not and mm -hmm. being paid to create content by publishers or not and how that kind of unfolds. Mm -hmm. um, I'll share my opinion and then maybe you can kind of share yours. I did an Instagram live or Instagram TikTok live about this not too long ago about doing reviews. I think that there is no way to be completely unbiased, right? Even if you are doing it because you weren't like you went out and bought the game for yourself, you still have some sort of like relationship to that game and or uh, maybe sometimes the publisher, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
but I do think that, right, I think maybe we, most people agree is that if you're getting paid, a review is not the right avenue to go, maybe more like a preview of the game. Right. Um, I don't know. What What are your opinions on, like, paid content versus... Well, I could tell you what my... my I have a, a media package out there, which has only been, like, you know, used a couple times. <laughs> And it's, uh, I offer uh, a how to play video. Uh, and I offer two posts on Instagram. One is just a little intro video. And then the second is just a carousel of pictures. And that is what the package that I tell the publishers are playing for or paying for. I always usually do a review to every how to video I do. So I tell them, this is what you're paying for. You will get a review also, but I'm not, if we're, itemizing the receipt the review is not on the receipt it's kind of like mm. an added bonus but at the same time that's kind of why i go towards the is it boring or not because if it's boring that really doesn't have to do with whether the game is good or not there's plenty of good games out there that i just find boring so it's kind of like it's one of those things where yeah you can't be 100 percent non-biased because like you said if you spent your own money on it you know or for instance, a lot of the games that I've done so far are some of the games that I've had in my collection for years. So, I mean, if I've gone mm. to them this long, you know, I like them. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and as a, like a consumer, that's why it's important to find the reviewers who kind of align with the same types of games you enjoy. You, mm -hmm. you end up finding out, like, you buy a game that a reviewer suggests. So you're like, oh, that was good. You buy a second one, they suggest, oh, that was good too. And then you kind of realize, okay, I pretty much like anything this reviewer suggests. Um, for us, we've never done reviews. We've always done like um, previews and then our podcast in the past, Board Game with Education, we just talked about how games may be used in the classroom or at home or for learning. Um, yeah, so we, we've never done reviews. I don't think we we'll ever will do reviews, especially as a store. Um, I think that there are different experiences for different people. Um, so I don't, I don't think... As a store, it's hard because we also have to keep in mind, like we're a business, we need to carry products that sell. Um, right. But also like, I do believe personally in my philosophy that almost every game out there has an audience for that game. There's an audience for that for sure. game. Yeah, um, I get that a lot too, especially with the reviews that I'm not too fond of. You know, I get an audience member telling me, hey, you know, they, this game's good for this. And I was like, oh, I mean, if you think it's good for this, let me pin the comment. For instance, uh, what was that? that game that I wasn't too fond of. Um, it was the, I can't think of it right now. Oh, Elder Sign. Elder Sign. I'm not a huge fan of Elder Sign, but one of my commenters mentioned, you know, it's much better with this one expansion. And I was like, oh, well, that's good. And he did a whole little mini paragraph on why. I said, yeah, I'll pin this comment up there. That way if people, you know, don't agree with me and they're curious about other things that can make the game better, you know, I'll, I'm all for that. I just just because I think a game is boring doesn't mean it's boring to everyone, like you said. Yeah, and it's interesting seeing some reviewers do well with being critical of games. Um, the one that I think a lot of people are familiar with if they watch board game content is Shut Up and Sit Down. They're really oh, yeah. good at, <laughs> at critiquing games, right? Um, and I think that is really helpful for the hobby because it pushes publishers to create stronger and better games. Um, Cause there's a lot of publishers out there. There are a lot of games out there and it's yeah. hard to decide if for a store. Now I'm thinking not even just creating content, but for a store, it's hard to decide where to spend our inventory dollars. Like where uh, do we, which put horse to dollars? Back, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's tough. Like one thing I do just, this kind of related to content and also as a store owner, I follow some TikTok accounts mm -hmm. and I regularly check their page to see which videos maybe are going viral. Um, like Corridor is a good example of one that has gone viral on TikTok a couple times now, mm -hmm. or maybe it's the same video. Well, I mean, I know there's, I've seen a couple different videos of Corridor from a couple different content creators that it just, there's, you know, like I want to say a million views or something. Oh. And I know that we've gone through a couple different times where there are spikes and selling the game. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting to see that too. And that's something that I think a publisher can do marketing really well 
and not necessarily have a great game. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's, I kind of do the opposite. I, well, you're saying that I was thinking about that, like with Wild, I just so happened to come across it. Like I didn't, there wasn't really a big marketing push for it. I think after I had already backed it on Kickstarter, I saw it on uh, on Dice Tower where they did a little preview. But mm. other than that, I didn't see much of anything else. And I think it's a really good game. Like another game out there that I just recently uh, seen some things on uh, canvas it seems it's like a it's a painting game where you kind of we have uh, these clear cards with just different pieces of it painted on there and you kind of oh, lay yeah. them on top of each other to make a full picture i think that's a neat little mechanic and it's just it's a game that i didn't hear too much about and i'm out here looking for it now <laughs> yeah yeah canvas uh, i'm i wasn't paying attention too much of how much or how many reviewers I don't know if I checked out their Kickstarter, but it's definitely super popular just among people sharing it on Facebook um, right. and on different social media. Um, and that's super helpful for a publisher. They, you know, sometimes you don't need to do anything and the game just has something like you mentioned, that mechanic and it's mm -hmm. really great art. And even the box you can hang up, hang up as, as a like actual piece of art. Right. Um, right. So like all that just works for it for, helping people share the game without having to necessarily find reviewers for it. I don't know if they did or didn't get a lot of reviewers or if they, yeah. you know, I'm not it's sure. It's hard to tell. I think, I think they might've been a new, a new publisher. So it might've been one of those mm -hmm. things where they probably tried or either they did. And we just don't know those people because there, there's a lot of board game content out there. A lot of people that are making content that I don't know of. And hell, I'm one of those people. Like, you know, I don't have you know, thousands of followers, but, I, I like what I'm doing. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and that's the most important. Um, so the last thing I kind of want to talk about, because we're, we're getting close on time before we go into our game, is <laughs> like what what would you suggest to someone just getting started with creating content? Uh, it doesn't matter what equipment you have, for one. Uh, it depends on the type of content you want to make. If you have a camera, the camera I use, or have most recently used, was a 10-year-old camera. I used photography lights, so they weren't even like, you know, the best lighting or anything like that. I used what I had around to make majority of the content that is up on my channel right now. I just recently upgraded to a newer camera. A lot of it is you just have to be patient, take time with it, I think, and really like what you're putting out there. Because if you're going to be doing this, you have to really enjoy what you're doing or at least have a goal. For instance, I had talked about yeah. earlier about having the, doing the board game cafe. Part of what made me want to do this content creation thing was not only so I can continue enjoying my board games, the hobby, but if I do enough how-to videos and I open up, I do end up eventually opening up a board game cafe. I just slap my little QR code of my video <laughs> on there and then, you know, they can help each other. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's awesome. That's one thing that we, I wish I had the capacity and bandwidth to do. So it's good you're getting <laughs> started now because it's it's hard to make, make content on top of running a store. Um, oh, very much so. So I, you mentioned something that I have heard before and I think it's really important to keep in mind if you are getting started on anything, whether it's like creating content or whatever it might be, um, is the toolbox fallacy where you mentioned the equipment doesn't matter. Well, this is a fallacy where you kind of think it does. And because you think it does, you are delaying getting started. So you're like, oh, I just need the perfect wrench to be able to start becoming a plumber or I need the perfect hammer to start becoming a carpenter right you just you just need any hammer to really get going um right and i i thought that very same thing when i was first thinking about this I, it probably took me two months before i actually started to hit record i was looking at what i had and i was like i don't know if this will work i was trying to do all these sorts of things and it just i eventually started with a 10 year old camera and uh, the free yeah. iMovie uh editor yeah. and just went from there yeah and, and you can you can see some of my earlier videos too. Like it's not the best content out there, but I mean I think I've grown since then before even upgrading the equipment. And I think this just seeing what you're doing and not being a hundred percent content with it, like wanting to improve, will help you not only succeed or but help you grow. I think. Right. Yeah. And I think you made a good point that if anyone gets started, it's probably going to be not. I want to say garbage. It's probably going to be garbage. It's not going to be yeah. very good. I mean, I've seen some people get started like board game 
uh, like content creators or other spaces. And I was pretty impressed with like their first stuff, but uh, it's likely they were doing a lot of stuff before that, or they were creating content in a different sphere that I didn't mm -hmm. see. Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, you need to make a bunch of garbage before you finally, <laughs> finally make my, something good. I think my most garbage video is actually my most popular video, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, it, right. And that's goes back to what we, what we were talking about. You never know what's going to resonate with people too. Um, yeah, you never know. <laughs> Awesome. So let's let's go into our game. Um, we're gonna play five second rules. So if you've been following along on the video cast, you already know what five second rule is. But just in case you have not, um, I will give a category, and you will have to name three things in that category. In um, ten seconds, right? Yeah. Cool. Five cool. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought we talked earlier. We we're gonna do the ten second. <laughs> do the ten second <laughs> variant. Um, so Tom's competing against our other guests. We've had I'm I'm not sure. This is our first season, so I'm planning through how we're gonna release stuff. So if you're listening to this, you know now how it's been released. But I'm not sure if Tom's gonna be before or after certain guests. Um, we'll be better at like scheduling stuff once I get into season two. Um, so you're competing about among the other guests. I know we'll have some guests on here that are pairs where they just compete against each other. So you're competing against all the solo guests. And at this point, we've had one person get five and a half out of six. The half is because I'm going to let any listener decide if he got that last one or not. <laughs> so be more charming. So they choose me. Got it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's see. This is what it looks like. So it's going to count down three, two, one. As soon as it hit, hits one, I'm going to go to the next slide. Okay. Um, so we're going to start after this. Three, two, well, we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait because I'll explain. <laughs> get a so you're going to get a category after this. Three, two, one, go. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. Yes, no. Leopards, lions, giraffes. Okay, we'll count it because that was <laughs> definitely five seconds. So one, I it kind of delayed when I clicked it, so. All right, we're going to go to the next one. Three, two, one. Uh, trees, grass, rocks. Oof, just barely. Got two out of two. Next one. Three, two, one. Phone, computer, camera. Got it. All right, three out of three. You're, you're looking good. You got two more to go. Uh, cicadas, wasp, mosquitoes. Ooh. Okay, sorry. Now you have two more to go. Three, <laughs> two, one. Iron Man, Spider Man, Hulk. Oh, got it. Five. Last one. Three, two, one. Uh, wild, Badoku, and I lost oh. it. Lost it. <laughs> there are like so many. That's one of those ones where you have so many things to choose from. You're like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that that got um, Sam also. He, but he chose three games with like really long names. <laughs> so, yeah, it's interesting how those categories can people just choose sometimes like like long movie names or super long uh, superheroes. But it's whatever comes to your mind first. <laughs> All right, yeah. Tom, thank you so much for, for coming on the show. Uh, if you don't mind sharing a little bit more about where people can find you, where they can find your your content and all that good stuff. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thanks for having me, Dustin. It's uh, if you guys want to see some of my stuff, it's on YouTube at a board gamer. Board spelled B O R E D, like you know something's boring. And then if you're on Instagram, I show little snippets like uh, photography and little intro, thirty second intro bits at uh, a board gamer one. It's you know one of those things where someone else had a someone username before you. <laughs> And yeah, that's uh, if you're looking for how to's and reviews or, you know, just general content, that's where to find me. Awesome. So thank you so much again, Tom. And we will definitely check out your content and we'll hopefully see you again soon. All right. Thanks.